Hi everyone, welcome back to Singing How to Study Chinese. This is HSK Level One course, and today we are going to learn Lesson Nine, 第九课。你儿子在哪儿工作？你儿子在哪儿工作 ？Which means where does your son work? Okay, now let's first move on to our warm up as usual. There are six pictures and six new words. First, let's see the new words. First one is 爸爸。Baba, this one. Baba, it means father. Father. Next one is 医生医生 This means doctor. Doctor. And next one, 医院医院 It has the same character as 医生 And 医院 actually means a yard, a place. So 医院 actually means hospital. Hospital. Next one. 椅子，椅子。This means chair. Next, 猫，猫。It means cat. And last one, guess what does it mean? 狗。It means dog, dog. So now let's try to fill in the blanks. Okay, I will give you ten seconds. Okay, time's up. Now let's see the right answers. First one, Baba, which means father, is obviously F. F. We can see there are sons and a son and a father here. Next one is 医生 really easy is E, and 医院 is D, D, and 椅子 the chair C, 猫 is a cat. And last one, dog is B. Now let's move on to our text and the new words. So first, we can see here there looks it looks there are so many new words, but they are not that difficult. So first one is 小小小 Read up to me, please. 小小 It means small, little, small, little. And everybody still remember how to say little opposite to many? How to say that? We learned it in last lesson. Little opposite to many, not little opposite to big. Which is 少 Okay, 少 It is 少 We learned it in last lesson, and we learned how to say how much, how many. Which is 多少 Okay, 多少 So today we are going to learn 小 not 少 This one is 少 and this one is 小 Okay, 小 means small, little, opposite to big, big. So guess 小学生 What does this mean? 小学生 Guess the meaning of 小学生学生 means student, and 小学生 little student. It means students from primary school. Student 学生小学的学生 Okay, 小学的学生 It actually is 小学生 and 小学 is primary school. Okay, primary school students and 小朋友小朋友 Try to guess what does this mean? 小朋友，朋友 means friends, right? 朋友 means friend. So 小朋友 actually means little friend, little friend. They're calling the kid, calling the kid. Okay. Now try to say small shop, small shop. Small shop in Chinese. It is 小商店小商店小商店 And small cup. Small cup is 小杯子小杯子 Okay, 小杯子 This is small 小 Okay, now let's move on to next word is 猫 Read after me, please. 猫猫猫猫 Mao it means cat, cat. 
say cat. So if I want to say kitten, then I can say xiao mao, little cat, xiao mao. Okay, xiao mao is kitten, kitty. Next one, let's see the dog. Dog is go. Read up to me, please. Go, go. It means dog. So little dog is xiao go. Xiao go. Okay, xiao go. Just put xiao before go. Okay, next one is this word. Zai, zi ai, zai, zi ai, zai. It means to be in on at somewhere. To be in on at somewhere. It is a verb. Okay, verb. To be in on at somewhere. A verb. And when I want to say mm, at some place, then I just need to put the place after zai. For example, if I want to say at the shop, then it is zai shang dian. Zai shang dian. Okay, at school is 在学校, 在学校, okay, this is 在. And next one is 哪儿, 哪儿. Still remember what does 那 mean? We learned it last lesson. We learned 这, 那, 那 means that, okay, 那 means that. And 哪儿, 哪儿 means there, there, it means a place, there. Okay, read up to me. Nar. Nar. It is it has a retro flex final, so please roll up your tongue. Okay, roll up your tongue. Nar. Nar. Okay, it means there. So try to guess how to say here. Here. It must be jer, right? Jer. Nar is na plus er na. That plus er then. Here must be this plus a uh, er, then it is zhir, 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 zhir. Okay, this is here, zhir. And if I want to ask where, where, so how should I say where? Anybody still remember how to say which? Which is na. No ah na certain word na so if I wanna say where then I should say nar nar I just need to put a retroflex final after na then it becomes nar it is where nar okay so read after me nar nar jar jar nar nar okay very good now next one, 椅子, 椅子, z is neutral tone, okay? First one is third tone and next one is neutral tone. Okay, read after me. 椅子, 椅子, 椅子. Okay, it means chair, chair. So when I want to say a chair, then it is 椅, a, a number plus a measure word and plus the Chair, right? A number E E plus a measure word and plus a chair. Then it is E ba okay? E ba ba bo a ba is the measure word for chair, okay? E ba E ba okay? E ba and let, let's see the last new word. Xia mian, or just xia. Read up to me, please. Xia mian, xia mian, or xia, xia. It means the same meaning. It means under or below, under or below, okay, xia. And actually man, mian here means surface, surface, xia mian, the Lower below surface. Okay, xia only means under, under. Okay, now let's try to read it from the start. Each word twice. Three, two, one. Xiao, xiao, mao, mao, zai, zai, nar, nar, 
狗，狗，椅子，椅子，下面，下面，下，下。Okay, very good. Now let's see the text, and I will read it. Please listen carefully. It happened at home. A asked, 小猫在哪儿？小猫在那儿。小狗在哪儿？小狗在椅子下面。Okay, let's see the text sentence by sentence. First one, 小猫 means kitten, kitty. Okay, kitten, kitty, 小猫 little cat, 小猫在在 means be in on at somewhere. It is a verb. And 在哪儿？ At where? Where? Nar? Where? Okay, so actually this means where is the kitty? Where is the kitty? And next is 小猫在哪儿？小猫在哪儿 ？The kitty is there. The kitty is there. Nar? There. And next, I ask another animal, which is the dog, little dog. Where is the puppy? 小狗 little dog, puppy. Where is the puppy? Puppy 在哪儿？小狗在哪儿 ？Where? And B answered, 小狗在。小狗 is at 椅子下面。椅子下面 actually means the under the chair, under the chair. Actually, it means the under space of the chair. So, 椅子下面，椅子的下面 actually is 小狗在椅子下面。The puppy is under the chair. Okay. Now let's try to read it from the start. Read up to me. 小猫在哪儿？小猫在那儿。小狗在哪儿？小狗在椅子下面。Okay, when we are reading, please pay attention to the differentiation between 哪儿 and 哪儿。哪儿 third tone is where. 哪儿 fourth tone is there. Okay. Now let's try to read it in rows. I will be A and you will be B. Okay. Three, two, one. 小猫在哪儿？小狗在哪儿？ Okay, very good. Now let's switch the row. You will be A. Okay, three, two, one. 小猫在那儿。小狗在椅子下面。Okay, very good. Now let's move on to text two. Okay, we can see it happened at the railway station. Let's see. The first word is 在 again, 在 again. But in text one, 在 is a verb. It means to be in on at somewhere. And here, 在 is a preposition. It means in on at, in on at. Okay. So 在 can be a verb and it can be a preposition too. 在在 Okay. Let's see. So if you want to say somebody is at somewhere, you can use 在 to say someone. The subject, somebody or something, plus 在 and plus plus the place and the location. Okay, this is the structure of using 在 using 在 and we will talk about it in details later in the language point part. So this is the Verb 在 and this is the preposition 在 okay preposition 在 and next one is 哪儿 we just talked about it before it means where 
Nar, read after me, please. Nar, nar, it means where, where, okay? So if you wanna ask if someone is where, where is someone or where is somebody, then you can say, Zai nar, shei zai nar, shei zai nar. Okay, next one is gong zuo. Gong zuo. Read after me, please. Gong zuo. Gong zuo. It means work or job. So it has two meanings. One is the verb and one is the noun. The verb means to work and the noun means a job, a job. So if I say, ni de gong zuo. 你的工作, then this means your job, it's a noun, okay? Try to say my job, my job in Chinese. Try to say it. It is 我的工作, 我的工作. Okay, try to say his job, his job. It is 他的工作, 他的工作. And try to say 李月's job, 李月's job. Then it is Li Yueda Gongzu. Li Yueda Gongzu. Okay. Now try to say Li Yue's job is teacher. Li Yue's job is teacher. It is Li Yueda Gongzu Shi Lao Shi. Okay. To be is Shi in Chinese, right? So we will say Li Yueda Gongzu Shi Lao Shi. 老师 is teacher, okay? Now if I say 不工作, 不工作, then in this phrase, 工作 is noun or verb. It is a verb. 不工作 means don't work. 不工作, don't work. So if you want to say, if you want to say don't work, then you just need to put 不 before 工作, 不工作. So just try to make a sentence. I don't work. I don't work. Then it is 我不工作. 我不工作. Okay, very good. Now let's move on to the next word. It is 儿子. 儿子. Z is neutral tone. Now try to read after me. Read after me. 儿子. 儿子. Okay, this means son. Son. And your son is 你儿子, okay, 你儿子. You can say 你的儿子, but because 儿子 is a kinship to 你, so we can omit the in between, okay? We can just simplify 你的儿子 into 你儿子, 你儿子, your son. And if I want to say his son, then we can say 他儿子, 他儿子. Okay, teacher Lee's son is Li Lao Shi Da Okay, very good. Li Lao Shi Da And there is then how to say daughter? Daughter is Nu Er. Nu Er. It is Nu Er. Try to read after me. Nu Er. Nu Er. Nu Er means daughter. Daughter, okay. So this is son. Next one is yi yuan. Yi yuan. Yi yuan. Read up to me, please. Yi yuan. Yi yuan. It means hospital. Hospital. So try to say, go to the hospital. Go to the hospital. Go to is qi, a place in Chinese, okay? Qi. So Go to the hospital is qu yi yuan. Very good. Qu yi yuan. Okay, last one. Yi sheng is the kind of people who works in the hospital. Doctor, yi sheng, read up to me, please. Yi sheng, yi sheng, yi sheng. Two first tone syllables. Yi sheng means doctor. And try to say, he is doctor. He is doctor. This sentence is 他是医生. 他是医生. This is he is doctor. Okay, try to say 
Teacher Lee's son is doctor. Teacher Lee's son is doctor. And it is Lee 老师的儿子是医生. Lee 老师的儿子是医生. Okay, very good. Lee 老师的儿子是医生. Now let's try to read it from the start. It for twice. Read up to me. 在, 在, 哪儿, 哪儿, 工作, 工作, 儿子, 儿子, 医院, 医院, 医生, 医生. Okay, very good. Now let's move on to our text. I will read it and please listen carefully. 你在哪儿工作? 我在学校工作. 你儿子在哪儿工作? 我儿子在医院工作. 他是医生. Okay, let's see it sentence by sentence. First one, 你在哪儿工作? 你在哪儿工作? It means you. At where? 在哪儿? At where? 工作? Work. Work. Where do you work? Where do you work? So we can see we put 在哪儿 before 工作. Uh, actually, 在哪儿 is acting as an adverbial, right? Adverbial. And in Chinese, we will usually put adverbial words in front of the, in front of the verbs, okay? Next one. 我在学校工作. I work at school. 在学校工作. 在学校. We put 在学校 before this verb. Next, and ask it again. 你儿子, 你儿子, your son. 在哪儿, at where? 工作, work. Where does your son work? Where does your son work? 在哪儿, at where? 我儿子在医院工作. My son at hospital work. My son work at hospital. 他是医生, this one is really easy to understand. It just means he is doctor. He is doctor. Okay. 我儿子在医院工作. My son works in the hospital. Okay, we can see all these places, places, the words, the phrases indicating the direction, indicating the location, they are put before the verb here. Before the verb. Okay, now let's try to read it. Read up to me, please. 你在哪儿工作? 我在学校工作. 你儿子在哪儿工作? 我儿子在医院工作. 他是医生? Okay, now let's try to read it in rows. I will be A and you will be B. 你在哪儿工作? 你儿子在哪儿工作? 工作? Okay, very good. Now let's switch the row. You will be A, okay? Three, two, one. 我在学校工作。我儿子在医院工作,他是医生. Okay, now let's move on to our text three. There are only one word which is 爸爸. Read up to me, please. 爸爸. Second ba is neutral term. Please pay attention. 爸爸. 爸爸. Okay, means father. Father. 爸爸. Try to say your father. Your father. It is. 你爸爸, okay, 你爸爸. Next one, my father is 我爸爸. Very good, 我爸爸. His father, 他爸爸, 他爸爸. And my friend's father, my friend's father. It is, my friend is 我的朋友. And my friend's father, 我的朋友的爸爸. 
So in this sentence, we can see there are too many the in between. So we will get rid of one of them, which is 我朋友. We can get rid of the the in between 我 and 朋友 because 朋友 is the kin is a person for me, right? It's a person. So 我朋友 is enough. And we can we can just keep the second the in this phrase because we don't need to get rid of all of the the in our sentence, okay? 我朋友的爸爸. Okay, this one is really easy. Now let's move on to our text. I will read it and please listen carefully. 你爸爸在家吗? 不在家. 他在哪儿呢? 他在医院. Okay, let's see it. First, 你爸爸, your father. 在家吗? At home? And ma, we can see it is a question. It is a question. 你爸爸 at home? Your father at home? Is he at home? Okay, and B answered. 不在家, 不在家. So from these two sentences, we can see 在 here is the, is the verb, right? It's the verb. It is, it, it is acting as a predicate in the sentence. 你爸爸 actually is the subject and 在 is the verb and 家 is the object, object. 你爸爸在家吗? 你爸爸在家 or 你, 我爸爸不在家. And B answered, 不在家, not at home, not at home. And A asked, 他在哪儿呢? 他在哪儿呢? No, we learned before, it is actually asking about things mentioned before or the time, right? And here it is asking about the location of father. 他在哪儿呢? 他在哪儿呢? Okay, where is he? Where? 哪儿? 他在医院. He is in the hospital. He is in the hospital. 在医院. So we can see in these two sentences, the word order is the same. 他, 他在, 在哪儿医院. The word order is the same. Okay. Now let's try to read it from the start. Okay, read after me. 你爸爸在家吗? 不在家. 他在哪儿呢? 他在医院. Okay, let's play in a row. I will be A and you will be B. 你爸爸在家吗? 他在哪儿呢? Okay, when we are reading, please pay attention to these two words, ma and na, they are neutral term, okay? Now let's switch the row. You will be A and I will be B. Three, two, one. 不在家 他在医院. Okay, very good. Now let's move on to our next part, the language point. First is the verb 在 and the interrogative pronoun 哪儿. First, let's look at the interrogative pronoun 哪儿, which means where, where, okay, where. It means where. It is used to ask about the location of something or someone, something or someone, okay? Now let's see this one, the verb 在, the verb 在, okay? It is usually combined with this 哪儿 to ask about someone's place, someone's location, someone's direction. And the structure of this verb 在 is the subject plus 在 and plus the location or direction, okay? And if I want to say 不在, 不在, then it is the negative form of it, 不在, not at somewhere, 不在, okay? This is the negative form. And if I want to say, if I want to say a question, as a question, then I just need to change this location into 哪儿 and put a question mark after it. Somebody or something 在哪儿, 在哪儿. This is the question and this is the declarative sentence. Okay, this is the structure of 
the verb 在。Now let's see the example. First example is 我朋友在学校。我朋友在学校。我朋友 is the subject means my friend. 我朋友。And 在 here the verb and 学校 is actually the location. 学校。Let's see next one. 我妈妈在家。My mom is at home. 我妈妈在家。My mom, the subject, and 在 is the verb, and 家 is the location. Location at home. Last one. 小狗在椅子下面。小狗 is the subject, which means the dog, the puppy. 在 at somewhere, be at somewhere. 椅子下面 ，is means chair. 下面 means under. So 椅子下面 is under the chair. Under the chair. It is the location. Location. Now try to see the. Let's see the questions. Questions. First question is, 我的杯子在哪儿？我的杯子在哪儿 ？So the subject is 我的杯子 ，right? My cup, my glass, my cup. And next is the verb 在。The last is the location, which is where. Where? Okay. So let's see. Next example. 你的中国朋友在哪儿 Okay. This one, the subject is much longer. It is. There are six characters in this subject. 你的中国朋友 Your Chinese friend. Your Chinese friend 在哪儿 At where? Where is this Chinese friend? Okay, we can see it fits in this structure too. And last one, 小猫在哪儿？小猫 Kitty is the subject, and 在 the verb 在 and the location is 哪儿 Okay, so this is the structure of the verb 在 the verb 在 Now let's see the preposition 在 preposition 在 Okay, that can also act as a preposition, and it is used to use before a word of locality to introduce the place where an action or behavior takes place. Okay, where this action happened. Now let's see the example first. 我在朋友家喝茶 Okay, let's see what is the action. What is the action? The action is 喝茶 right? The verb is 喝茶 drink tea. The action is drink tea. And where is this? Where does this action happen? It happened 在朋友家 right? It happened in this place, 朋友家 friend's house, friend's home. So we put this 在 before this action, right? Before this action, so we can see the structure of Preposition 在 is the subject plus 在 plus 在 and we will plus the location, right? Location or the direction or the direction, and then we will put the verb. And this location is where the verb happened, where this verb happened. Let's see next example. 他们在学校看书 Okay, the action is. 看书 read books. 看书 and where does this happen? 在学校在学校 and the subject is 他们 as you know the subject is at the beginning of the sentence. Okay, now let's see the last one is 我儿子在医院工作 Okay, let's see the verb is 工作工作 The action is 工作 working, working, and the place the place where this happened is hospital, 医院医院 So the subject 我儿子 my son is working in the hospital, and we will always put the location before the verb at this structure. Okay, so please try to recite these structures. Now let's move on to next part. Next part, the interrogative particle. No, no. This particle we actually said before. We can use it to ask about things mentioned before. Mentioned before. And today we're going to learn another another 
meaning of it, it actually can use to ask about the location of somebody or something. The location of somebody or something. For example, 我的小猫呢? 我的小猫呢? It means, where is my cat? Where is my cat? In this sentence, we cannot see any word indicating the lo location, right? We cannot see 哪 which means where. But we still know this sentence means we are looking for the cat. 我的小猫呢? Where is my cat? How about my cat? Okay. Next one. 我的杯子呢? Before no, there is nothing indicating about the location. We can just see 我的杯子, my cup. And I put a no after it. 我的杯子呢? 我的杯子呢? Then this sentence becomes a question about the location of 我的杯子, the location of my cup. Okay. 我的杯子呢? Means where is my cup? Okay, let's see that last one. 他在哪呢? 他在哪呢? Okay. So in this sentence, we can see before no, we can know it is exactly asking about the direction, the location of ta of he, right? Because we can see 在哪在哪 means at where, at where, nar is where. So 他在哪呢? is where is he, where is he, okay? So try to make a sentence, try to make a sentence. Where is his puppy? Where is his puppy? Where is his puppy? Puppy is 小狗, okay, 小狗. So this sentence is 我的, uh, his puppy, his puppy. 他的小狗呢, 他的小狗呢, is enough. Yes, 他的小狗呢, 他的小狗呢, is enough. And we can also say 他的小狗在哪呢? 在哪呢? is okay too. So we can see here. 他在哪呢? This sentence, we can also transform it into another simplified version, which is 他呢? Yes, 他呢 is enough. We can just say 他呢 to ask about 他's location, okay? The location of 他, location of he. So 他的小狗呢? Where is his dog? Where is his puppy? Okay, try to make another sentence. Where is your Chinese book? Where is your Chinese book? Okay, try to say this sentence. Where is your Chinese book? It is your Chinese book. It is the subject. So put it at the beginning of the sentence. 你的汉语书, okay, 你的汉语书, it means your Chinese book, okay, 你的汉语书, your Chinese book. And we should asking, we are asking about the location of 你的汉语书, so we can just put a n after it, and it becomes 你的汉语书呢? 你的汉语书呢? And if I want to complete this sentence, then this sentence becomes 你的汉语书在哪呢? Okay, 你的汉语书在哪呢? But in daily speaking, we will use, just use 你的汉语书呢? More often, okay? More often. So these are the four language points for today. Now let's move on to our practice, practice, okay? So first, let's try to answer the question based on the dialogues. Dialogues. First one, 小狗在哪儿? 小狗在哪儿? Still remember the answer of this question? It is in the text. You can go back to the text and check the answer. Okay, 小狗在哪儿? This, this question is actually asking about the location of the puppy. So where is the puppy? The puppy is under the chair. So 小狗在椅子下面. 
小狗在椅子下面。OK, next one. 他在哪儿工作？他在哪儿工作 ？This conversation happened at the railway station. OK, 他在哪儿工作 ？It's not asking about his son. It is asking about himself. 他在哪儿工作 ？OK, the answer is. 他在学校工作。他在学校工作。He is working at the school. Okay, next one. 他儿子在哪儿工作？他儿子在哪儿工作 ？Where is his son working? Where does his son work? So the answer is, 他儿子在医院工作。他是医生 ，OK。他儿子在医院工作，他是医生 ，OK。Last questions。他爸爸在家吗？他爸爸在家吗 ？Does her father at home? Is her father at home? So the answer is， 他爸爸不在家。他爸爸。不在家 ，his father is not at home. And 他爸爸在哪儿呢？他爸爸在哪儿呢 ？Where is his father? 他爸爸在哪儿？他爸爸在医院。他爸爸在医院。Okay, now let's move on to our exercise. The first one you can see in the picture there is a kitty on the Chair. Let's see. In this sentence, we can see only one word in the middle, which is 在在 which means be at, be in, be on. So we can see it is asking about the location of some one or something. And here we can see a cat. So try to say where is the cat? The cat is on the chair. On the chair. Okay. So. 小猫 is the cat. 小猫在 on the chair. How to say that? If it is under the chair, though, then we can say 椅子下面椅子下面 And when it is on the chair, it is 上面 Okay. Try to take the note. 上面上是 on 上 It means up. It means up. We learned this character before when we are talking about morning. We learned 上午 is morning, 下午 is afternoon. So 下面 is under, and 上面 is up on something. So 小猫在椅子上面是 on 上 It means on something, on the upper surface of something. Next one. Here, here, there is a kid. There is a kid. A little friend. A little friend. He is under the chair. Now let's try to fill in the blanks. We learned how to say little friend. It is 小朋友 Okay, 小朋友在椅子。下面 ，OK, very good. 小朋友在椅子下面。小朋友在椅子下面。The next one. 我妈妈是 what? 她在 where? OK. 我妈妈是在 means be only at something, some place. So we will need to put in a location here. And there is the her her. Profession, her job. So here we can see she is a doctor. So we can put 医生 here. 医生 okay, 医生 If you cannot write it, you can try to write the pinyin of these words. Okay. And 他在 Where is a doctor? Where are doctors? 医院 right? 医院医院 Okay. 我妈妈是医生，她在医院。Okay, now let's see the last one. Last one is 我女儿是 what? 她不 what? 
we can see in the picture she is wearing a backpack and she carries a lot of books and notebooks so so we can indicate that she might be a student so for a student it is not that possible that she is working at the same time she might doesn't have a full job right so we can say 我女儿是学生,她不工作. So here, 学生 is the non, and in here, 工作 is the verb, 不工作, don't work, don't work, okay? So these are the exercises. Now let's move on to the tone, to the tone collocation in dice-level words. So today are about the fourth tone with the other Tones, fourth tone with other tones. So let's see the first one. Mian bao, it means bread. Mian bao, mian bao. We can see from the pitch table, from the first to fifth, it is dropping down really rapidly from four to two, four to two. It is dropping. And then bao, this first tone is still really even, really level. Okay, mian. Bao, mian, bao, okay. Pay attention to the pitch where this tone holds. It is not mian bao, it is mian bao, mian bao. Okay, next one is mian tiao, which means noodle, noodle, mian tiao, mian tiao. We can see it is dropping and rising, drop and rise, okay. Mian tiao, mian tiao. It is not mian tiao, it's mian tiao, okay? Now, next one, we should pay attention to it because there are third tone, third tone. Let's see, the third tone is half third tone as usual. So, read after me. Bian nao, bian nao, bian nao, okay? It is not bian nao, it's bian nao. Bian nao, okay, read up me. Bian nao, okay, bian nao. Last one is dian hua, dian hua, two false tones. Dian hua, dian hua. It dropped to here and then it rise to here to start. Hua, dian hua, okay, it is not dian hua, it's dian hua, dian hua, okay. Now let's try to read some new words to practice it. Practice it, okay? So let's try to read this first time, okay? First one. Xia tian. Xia tian. Xia tian. It's not xia tian. It's xia tian. Xia tian. Okay, next one is. Qu nian. Qu nian. Qu nian is rising up. And next one, tiao wu, tiao wu, tiao wu. Okay, last one is shui jiao, shui jiao, shui jiao. Okay, this is the tone collocation in disyllabic words of fourth term, fourth term. And now let's move on to next part, single component characters. First one must be zai, zai, today's most important character, zai. Okay, in ancient time, actually it means the grass sprouting from the earth, sprouting from the earth. This horizontal is the earth, and this is the grass. And some part of it, it is growing out of the earth. We can see this part is growing out of the earth, right? So it means the grass sprouting out. Now it means to be exist, to be at somewhere, to live and exist. Okay, now let's see how to write it. And please try to write it with me. First, write a short horizontal and then a left turning. And then write a vertical here. And then try to write a horizontal at the right of the vertical. And then put a short vertical to throw it in the middle. And then a longer one at the bottom. Okay, try to write it with me. First a horizontal, and then a left turning, and then a vertical here, 
and then uh, horizontal, and then vertical, and then horizontal. Let's try again. Horizontal, left turning, vertical, horizontal, left, uh, vertical, horizontal. Okay, try again. Horizontal, left turning, horizontal, horizontal. Okay, this is that. That. Try again, please. Try again. It is a little bit complicated. Horizontal, left turning, vertical. Horizontal, vertical, horizontal. Okay, this is that. Now let's move on to next one. Next one is zi. Zi in erzi. Erzi means sun, okay? Erzi, this is the neutral tone, but when zi is used individually, it is a third tone word. Zi. It means baby, baby. And now it has many meanings. Very, very many meanings. For example, in earth, it means sun. And in, um, in 电子, 电子, it means electron, electron. Okay, so we can see this one looks actually like a baby. This is the head and this is the two arms, two arms. And now it looks like this. This one is really easy to write. Okay, try to write it with me. First, a horizontal like this it is there is looks like a hook and then a vertical hook and then a long horizontal okay try to write it with me okay try again okay try again this one is really easy, okay? Try to practice more after the class. Now let's move on to the next word, which is gong means drop. Gong means drop. In ancient time, it actually looked like a zigzag ruler for a worker. And now it means work or craft, craft something to work, to drop. Okay, it is really easy to write it. Okay, first a short horizontal and then a short vertical and then a longer horizontal. Really easy. It looks like I in English, but it is more not that tall, it's shorter. Okay, try to write it with me. Short one, longer one. Short one, longer one. Short one, longer one. But don't write the longer one too long like, like this, okay? Don't write it too long, like this. This is not right, okay? Just write it a little bit longer. A little bit longer is enough. Okay, now let's move on to the next part, which is the structure of Chinese characters, part four, part four. Half enclosure, half enclosure. What is half enclosure? It is enclosed half, halfly. For example, first one is dian. Dian of Shang Dian. Shang Dian, do you remember it? It means shop, right? Shop. And Dian means shop too. Let's see the structure of Dian. Dian. We can see we will write this part first. And then we will write this inside. Okay? And this part is actually enclosing this thing. And because it enclosures just the upper side and the left side. So this is called half enclosure, half enclosure, okay, half enclosure. It doesn't close all of this. It just closed half, okay. Now let's see next one is xi, 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 which means study, to study, xue, xi, xi. Okay, let's see the structure of this character. I can see we will write this thing first. And then we will write this a dot and the rising inside it. So we can see this part is closing, enclosing the whole word. And it is only enclosing the upper and the right side. Upper and the right side. Half. Next one, zhe means this. And this part is actually enclosing the word, and it is enclosing the left and the bottom. And next one, tong, tong, which means same, tong, which means the same. And it is enclosing this part, 
We can see it is including left, up, and right. Three parts, but in the bottom, nothing. It is open. Okay, it is open. So it is still called half enclosure, not full enclosure. Next one, xiong, xiong, which means fierce. Xiong, fierce. You can see this part is enclosing this cross inside. So it is enclosing the left, the bottom, and the right side. And for E, the doctor, E, the doctor and the, and the hospital. We can all see this character inside. And this character, this part is closing this up and left and bottom part of this character. So this is a half enclosure structure. Okay, half enclosure. It is not closing the whole character. It is closing the half of it, part of it. Now let's move on to the last part, which is the Chinese radical. Chinese radical. Two radicals. First is zhou zhi pang. Zhou zhi pang. Pang means radical, okay? Zhou zhi pang. And this one means zhou zhi. This thing means zhou zhi. And it is always um, usually related to walking. Walking. Okay, first one. First one is zhe which means this, zhe, which means this. In ancient time, this is actually related to walking. But now it only means this, it only means this. And this side is zhou zhi pang, zhou zhi pang. And next, song, which means to send, to send, to send someone or something. We all need to use our legs to walk. So, there is this so pang, this radical. Okay, so pang. Now let's see next one. Next one is men zi kuang. Men zi kuang. Men zi kuang, this part means men mu en men. It means the door. The door. Men zi kuang. Zi means character, okay? Men zi kuang. Kuang means a frame. So it is actually a Men frame, a door frame, a door frame radical, a door frame radical. So this radical men is usually related to a room or door or a space. Okay, let's see the examples. First one is one, one to ask something, to ask something. Okay, one, one to ask something. If you want to ask someone, you must be in the same space with this person in ancient time. But now you can. It just you both in the earth, okay? You can ask someone on the internet, but you must be in the earth, right? Next one is Jian. Jian it means a major word for a room, a major word for a room. So we can see there is a door here, right? Major word for a room. A room has a door. So we have men zi kuang, men zi kuang. So these are two radicals we learned today. And that is all for today's class. Please try to practice the new characters more and try to practice the pronunciations for the new words. And thank you for listening. See you next time. Bye-bye.